Hey, Rob here. How can I have a channel that is looking at comic books and not address Frank Miller or Sin City? Um, there's certainly works that I'm going to be very excited to look at, and Sin City is one of the ones I'm most excited about. Um, but I thought I'd do something a little bit different if I could. Um, when you know, think of Frank Miller and Sin City, he's got um, the big works, like the big multiple book collections that he's done. There is The Hard Goodbye, which I have, it came with the DVDs. I have this small collection here. And I think it was released initially in small chapters, but it's one story and it's a big book. Like that is a big ass story and it's great. It may be the best one. Um, there's that Yellow Bastard, there's the Helen back. Um, there, you know, several big collections that he did. But in the spirit of trying to do something different that I haven't seen anybody else discuss, I'm not saying nobody has, but he did a couple of just single issue, like trying to show it without bumping the camera, but just a regular comic book size thing rather than, this is just like a, a couple of short stories rather than a big collection like this guy was, or there's uh, the other books were released in like single issue form, but it was like, several, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine issues long to create a big book. But this is just a one-off, just a single issue um, with some small stories in it. And there were two others that I'm not going to do tonight, but we'll look at later. But there's this one, another basic floppy comic, and then this one, you know, Sex and Violence, just another Saturday night. So I wanted to look at these, but I wanted to start with this one because this is the first chronologically that he released. As far as design elements, um, if you watch my videos, you watch me do that, uh, just just going on a ridiculous rant about the design failures of that Bart Sears, Ominous Press, Brute and Babe nonsense bullshit. It's just so awful. Look at this simple thing. He's got a perfect logo, perfect text, and then this these lips with the smoke coming out of it. Simple, eye-catching, beautiful, love it. Love it, couldn't be more perfect. And what I like is it's kind of it's like it's a kind of a matte kind of paper, not not glossy or shiny, and um, with the exception of the lips, kind of you see how the lips have got a spot varnish. I think might be the proper term for it, but the rest is not. It just makes it stand out. Like that's the only thing on there that reflects like that. Anyway, interesting component to it. You pop it open, lost, lonely, and lethal. This image and this little thing here, she's like. If you know Sin City, you know, there's Old Town. It's a town full of prostitutes, hookers, things like that. That's clearly what she is. She's saying that's what you get for not giving with the tip, you slob. She's got him stabbed to death. This has nothing to do with anything. It's just a picture he threw in the front of it, which is kind of funny. It's like just a thing, just like an idea he had probably. So now this, this might be kind of stupid and embarrassing of me because there's this first story, one, two three pages, and that's one story. And then there's another story that starts here, and I think there's at least, there's one, maybe two more. He just has some short stories. This one, I'm actually gonna read it to you. It's interesting because he's got these characters, they're called Fat Man and Little Boy. These low rent loser hitmen with delusions of eloquence, I believe is how they were described in a book before. And the text is just great because he writes them, they speak with such big words and eloquence to say, um, like it says right here, Douglas Clump and Bert Schlub, low rent hitmen who go by the names of Fat Man and Little Boy. And again, this might be embarrassing for me to do, but I'm gonna read you just because it's funny to me. Maybe this will be stupid. But the little guy, he's saying, the perimeters of our assignment were described to us with specificity, Mr. Schlub. We are to deposit our cargo into the body of water, which we now overlook. It was made light it was it was likewise made clear to us that any embellishments of said perimeters would not be advisory. The other guy says, I cannot prescribe to such a narrow interpretation of the perimeters which you now invoke, Mr. Clump. This guy goes on. Be be this as it might, and with all due respect, Mr. Schlupp, I must nonetheless suggest that simple footwear is of little value when compared to the risk of incurring ill will on the part of our already displeased employers. This guy here, 
the before-mentioned footwear being a pair of finely crafted boots, the value of which I estimate to be no less than $200, and which happened to be exactly the correct size for my own poorly clad feet, Mr. Clump. So they're trying to dispose of a dead body, and his feet are sticking out, and this guy doesn't have some shitty-ass shoes. And he's like, well, I want to take his shoes. And this guy's like, we, we, we can't, we just, our bosses are mad at us anyway. We can't deviate. He said, just get rid of the body, drop it and be done. Don't touch it. Don't fuck with it. Don't do anything. But so he's trying to talk him into letting him take the shoes. So the little guy, your discomfort, discomfiture notwithstanding, surely you remember that we are on notice pursuant to our less than adequate performance at rendering silent in a permanent manner, a certain witness to a murder. Hence, our regulation to duties of such a common and janitorial nature as these we now perform, Mr. Schlub. Herewith, it is most incontinent upon me to most strenuously challenge your assessment of the consequences of the simple act of acquirement I am at this moment contemplating, Mr. Clum. Surely the bearer of the exquisite footwear in question is unlikely to inform our employers of this minor transgression, said bearer being one can readily assume a stiff. <laughs> so, it's so funny to me. Given our current status in the extra-legal community, even a minor transgression could cause for discipline most severe, Mr. Schlub. Still, I must insist, Mr. Clump, our extended period of limited income have remanded me bereft of any but the most embarrassing and blister-inducing of, be of petal garments. I re registrate my protest, Mr. Schlub. Your protest is duly noted, Mr. Clump. And here I must confess to stunned surprise, for with, within the much-desired boots, there are no feet which could only raise the question as to why the carpet we did carry was of such weight if there is no wrapped in, if if there is wrapped inside it no corpse and why now this sound not unlike the ticking of a clock boom <laughs> the thing blows up the guy says leave us say we have been roundly disciplined mr schlub i regretfully confer concur mr clump the end just a simple, stupid three-page story of these guys trying to see if they could steal this guy's shoes, but their their employers knew they were going to fuck up. They rigged it to blow to teach them a lesson. What a ridiculous, funny, and interesting way to exercise your ability to write ridiculous dialogue. Like, I find that so entertaining, and I, I don't know if my reading isn't profoundly obnoxious, but I just thought it was funny. So that's the end of one story. This other one, rats. Um... I mean, the, the text is big enough. You can read this on your own if you wanted to. But basically, I believe it's supposed to be, this guy used to be like a Nazi shoulder. Jesus Christ, a Nazi soldier. And is thinking to himself about the, the war, the blitz, what the English called it, what the Americans called it. Um, and then he's kind of interacting with this rat here that, he ends up capturing. He wanted to, he's going to like kill it, but he's talking about stupid rats. They, they squealed too. Thousands. They all squealed. No fire, only gas. They all squealed. So you can infer from this, he's probably a Nazi and he's thinking about the extermination of the Jews that he took part in. And he was super happy with that. He, he was into it. Somebody comes to his door. Um, presumably a, a Jewish fella who picks him up, chokes his ass out. Um, puts him into the, the stove and gasses him himself to give him a taste of his own medicine. The end. That's it. Done. Simple little short story. This one was interesting because it introduces a character that we will see in those other single books, a character that is called Blue Eyes. And this is interesting because Frank Miller's Sin City books were always done in black and white. But on occasion, he had some spot colors, a red or a blue or a yellow, just to give it some emphasis. But this guy... He's panicking and he's on the run because this guy's chasing him. He knows he's done something. We don't know what. Something's gone wrong and this guy's chasing him and this guy is calm as hell. He doesn't care. He's not worried about it. This guy's panicking, um, jumping over a, a fence, tumbling, falling onto the ground. You can see here, if you know Sin City, there's Miho. Um, but he's getting away. Um, he steals a car. Frank Miller always had a, I mean, he does great, big, awesome lettering. His cars are almost never touching the ground to show their speed. Um, the bad guy continues to chase him. Like, he's in a Mustang. This looks like a, a, a Tucker. I believe that's what that is. 
and this is Manute and the Colonel. They're characters that we've seen before in the books, but they're just chasing this guy through the rain, the water. This guy pulls up to like a the guy at the beginning who's in the Mustang trying to get away, who's panicking and scared. He gets to a uh, a bar. He gets in there. He's freaking out. And again, if you know Sin City and you go in the right bar, there's Nancy, the hot cat, hot girl, always dancing. And this is Frank Miller giving him an opportunity to do his female figures with that shading and lighting that he does, does this dramatic, like it's certainly exaggerated, but it's pretty visually entertaining. It's pretty good. But anyway, this guy is just talking to himself. And then you keep running into characters. These are all characters that we've seen in previous books. It's just some guy, some guy here puking on himself. So you're just kind of running across the characters that we've already met in other books. We're just kind of seeing them as he just kind of passes by them. Um, but he's in the bar. He's trying to hide and um, trying to pretend like he's not freaking out, just drink, he's holding and shaking because the guy he was chasing him is just right there and he's panicked, but he's trying to act like he doesn't know. And um, so here he's just freaking out. It's the hitman. He's not human. He, he's ignoring him. What the hell's going on? He takes a shot. He's just panicking. He's going to die. But then this girl shows up and he knows the voice. Delia? And she's sad looking. And again, it, you know that she's important because she's got that spot color. Um, she's talking about how she's missed him and she's been looking for him and she's been trying to find him and she was such a fool. And she's like, you don't even want to speak to me. I was such a horrible person. I'll go away. I'm sorry. I shouldn't bother you. And again, she's speaking to the guy who's the scared guy who's panicking. The guy that's hunting him down is still there just kind of watching. And again, if you know Sid City, there's Marv. But uh, yeah, the guy's like, no, no, stay here. Uh, it's, it's all right. Um, you, you shouldn't be here. I'm in big trouble. You shouldn't be near me. Uh, but they basically kind of reconnect. They obviously have a past relationship and she knows that he should be pissed at him. But, uh, you know, they make out. Everything's going on. Marv here is like, hey, buddy, if you're not going to finish your beer, it's all the same to you. I'm just going to finish your beer for you. So he decides to take off. Marv is just enjoying the beer. Um, he's like, we got to get out of here. We got to, we got to get out of the guy. Somebody's chasing me, but you're here. Now you're in danger. We got to get out of here. And Marv, he's just marveling over Nancy. Like we, he always does cut to the main character of the story. Um, yeah, good times. Um, and so he's like, you're back. We're, we're together. We're, we can be together. I'm yours, body and soul. And she's like, they're so cruel. They're so cruel. I do love you, Jim, more than I ever realized. I do love you. She's like freaking out, panicking. And again, you can see like, it's not only her clothes, but her eyes have the color. Um, but she's like, but that's why you have to die. Boom, pops him. Got him like with her foot up against the wall. Um, she's saying here after they broke up, she fell with a very bad crowd, married a man. He beat me. I killed him. And then she says, it turns out I'm good at killing and I like it. I like it a lot. And she says, there's a guild made up of people like me and a world of customers for our services. And this is graduation day for her. They need to know that she can do anything that is asked of her. And she's saying, I really do love you. I do. And if I can kill you, then I can do anything crunch breaks his neck he's dead and that guy that was chasing him in the beginning the colonel they call him he's like well done she's like i did cry he says that's part of the process you did well you're inducted here's your first target you need a code name and she's like call me blue eyes the end great little simple little story that fits right in the world of sin city fun little thing the letters pages where he you know people write in classic letters pages always good times and another thing that was fun is he'd always get artists to do pinups of his characters in the back. Barry Windsor Smith doing Marv. This is great because that's da artist Dave, Gib Dave Gibbons, the guy who drew Watchmen. He's do he did a drawing of that is a drawing of Frank Miller himself, the artist, um, like sitting at his table with all his ink supplies and his tools. Got a really screwed up brush, but him drawing the book. That's a great little pinup. That was something unique, and. Um, just kind of advertising for more, but I love that drawing, the use of shadow and black and white. It's just so good. 
And then just, yeah, Sin City, you got A Dame to Kill For, The Babe Wore Red, and other stories, Big Fat Kill, Silent Night, all the books that Frank Miller did at, the, at this point, and the back cover. So just a fun little one-off book. We'll be definitely looking at those other ones um, in good time, but just wanted to get this one on here. Um, it was fun. And again, what great design. It's so good. Anyway, um, you can fan of Sin City? You read this stuff? Did you like this stuff? I always found it extremely interesting. The first movie was really good. Um, the second one, not quite, not so much. There were elements to it that were all right, but the comics were great stuff. It's a shame he's not doing them anymore. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Thank you, as always, for watching. I very much appreciate it. See you next time.